We must accept this result and then look to the future. Donald Trump is going to be our president. We owe him an open mind and the chance to lead. Okay, remember that? Hillary Clinton asking her supporters to give President Trump a chance in the White House. That was a year ago. Has she taken her own advice? Have any of her supporters taken that advice? Well, let's take that up with our political panel. Joining me now, Fox News political analyst Gianna Caldwell and Democratic strategist Wendy Osefo. It's great to have you both here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you know, what do you think, Gianna? I mean, how long did Hillary let Trump lead, do you think? Give me, was it weeks? Was it months? Well, obviously, that was what she needed to say because that's the tradition of candidates. But I got to tell you, though, uh, President Trump, I always personally believe that he could be one of the greatest presidents we, we've had. Um, him not being an ideologue, him saying, hey, we want to do things American first, which means he can get ideas from Republicans, Democrats, and whichever one was going to be most beneficial for Americans, he can go with that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, though, and I got to be honest, even as a Republican, I'm kind of disappointed in some of the things that I've seen from him, not policy-wise specifically, it's more so his actions on Twitter. For example, last night's uh, election returns, it wasn't 10 minutes before the results was in before he started uh, beating up on Ed Gillespie. I'm looking for a united and chief, especially in our party, and somebody who's going to be loyal. Yeah. And President Trump needs to work on that. Yeah. Well, here's another flashback. Remember how Hillary blasted Trump among women voters but still failed to rally female support for herself? Wendy, listen to this. Okay. Despite massive criticism over Trump's language when it came to women, 54% of women back Clinton. However, 42% voted for Trump. And that's pretty similar to how women have voted in 2012. So, Congressman, are you surprised that women didn't vote in bigger numbers for Hillary Clinton? Well, you have to keep in mind, I mean, women, like any other voters, have a whole range of interests, one of which is to make sure that uh, women are represented. But obviously, there was something that uh, uh, in Hillary Clinton's candidacy that did not fulfill the wishes of a lot of women. I don't know, Wendy, why do you think she couldn't pull stronger numbers among women? Because she, she just didn't. And I, many people were surprised by that, let's just be honest. Yeah, I think you bring up a good point, but I don't think it's good for us to re-legislate the election, but let's look at the numbers from a racial economic status, right? When you look at those individuals who voted for Hillary Clinton, you didn't have necessarily white women who voted for her, but 70% of African-American women did. So it's not that all women did vote for her, it was just a segment of the population that did not. But we have to know that Hillary Hillary Clinton, when she was campaigning, she always struggled with women voters because she did not connect in yeah. a way that but women voters were looking for. But you know what? If you look at the numbers that Barack Obama pulled in, she didn't pull in the same number of women, Latino or black voters, that even he did. I mean, absolutely. She really, it just she seemed, and I'm a woman saying this, it seemed like she really failed to connect. I agree with women. They disliked yeah. her. I agree. Wendy. And it's it fascinating. Yeah. I agree 100. percent She did not make that connection. As a Democrat, I will own up to that. She was not the best candidate. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. unfortunately, but we, we had to go with what we had, and that was Hillary Clinton at the yeah, time. No, yeah, well, if you're Bernie Sanders, you're, you're smart. He's very, yeah. Over a lot of things right now. Okay, yeah. but, but one year later. There was a rigging of the election, <laughs> though. Like, so it wasn't necessarily yeah, what you had to go with. It was what they presented and kind of forced down the throat the of Democrats. The elections weren't rigged, Gianna. Well, Even Donna Brazil came on and said that the, the elections the were not rigged. It, well, the, we're going to hear more from well, Donna Brazil tonight on the Fox News Channel, guys. Then it's obviously uh, a rigging somewhere. Yeah, looking forward to it on Tucker Carlson tonight. Yeah, yeah, that's Donna Brazil is going to be with Tucker tonight. That's like must watch TV. Uh, by the way, Gianna, do you think the Democrats have accepted the election results? I'm going to ask that to both of you, but mm -hmm. Gianna, do you first. Have they really accepted or are they still upset? Certainly not. Absolutely not. I mean, we're, we're still seeing many celebrities. I'm here in Hollywood right now where they're still talking about President Trump, but not looking in their own backyard at Harvey Weinstein and really have had the opportunity, <laughs> knowing what was going on here in Hollywood, to reject him outright and others like him. So when you look at that and many political groups that are doing the same, it's, it's very disappointing that even though I may disagree with some of President uh, Trump's tactics, he's the president of the United States. I support the president of the United States, no matter who that individual okay. is. Wendy, real quick. 
you know, quite honestly, we have accepted the results of the election. I do not mm -hmm. think that the Republican Party has. Every day you see Donald Trump referenced in Hillary Clinton. He's talking about the election. He just needs to move on. He's the president of the free world. Well, he, no, he hasn't moved on. He's still celebrating a year later. He's like, and we won. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think it's celebration. No. The presidency. No. Oh, Joe, are you kidding me? He's I like the happiest real, president real, that's real ever quick, seen. I think when every, I think when everybody writes you off and says yeah. that you have no chance at winning, then you probably celebrate yeah. a little longer than most other people. Guys, I'm loving this conversation. Stay with me. We're going to take a quick break. But, but well, you know, it's interesting, guys. I mean, one year after being elected, you've got this new evidence that President Trump actually is making America great again. We've got numbers to show you. We'll be back. Working together, we will begin the urgent task of rebuilding our nation and renewing the American dream. You know, a majority of Americans now think that America is great again. That's according to a Pew Research survey. A whopping 82% say they've achieved or they're on their way to achieving the American dream. Back with us is Gianna Caldwell and Wendy Osefo. I don't know. I mean, it's interesting, Wendy, because there's so much negative media coverage of the administration. But if you look at the survey, really, that was his campaign promise, Wendy. I mean, you got to give it to him for that. Make America great again. He did. It was his campaign promise. But he had lots of campaign promises, and we have to look at the totality of the promises that he gave. So I will give him credit where credit is due. The numbers don't lie. We have empirical evidence that supports that. But he also said other things. He said he will repeal Obamacare. He wasn't able to do that. Tax reform oh, right now. Blame Congress for that. Though. Well, you know, yeah. he, he also did shepherd it the right way. And then right now, tax reform is in the limbo. And then we're still looking at this wall. Will that wall ever be built? Even though we see prototypes, what does that look like? So yes, when the numbers. the wall's going to get built. Well, okay, go. We will see, but right now, Come you know. On, sis, don't be so hard. Gianna, I'm being Come honest. On, sis. Come on, bro. Of course. No, 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 no. You and I agree on a, a whole host of issues when it comes to certain things like that. But certainly, I give the president an opportunity to do it, especially when I know that Congress has a very big hand in getting those things done. It's not the president alone that can get it done. But I'll tell you this. It, it warms my heart to hear that there's so many people that feel that the, the American dream, their American dream is really uh, in reach and they, uh, they're accomplishing it right now. And I, I'll go back to that tax policy issue because there's 27 million small businesses in the United States of America right now, according to Forbes anyway. And a lot of those small businesses depend on stability in their financial markets. So tax reform is so important. I'm also thankful that me being a guy from the south side of Chicago, uh, I've reached the American dream and I know, uh, Wendy, you're from uh, Nigeria, Nigeria, I believe it is. And you're, and, and you, and look, we're living the American dream. We're two African Americans on television right now talking about very important issues that are impacting our country on a daily basis. And I love you, So both. God is good. I'm happy to be <laughs> right here. Back. And I Thank love you. this conversation. But Thank I, you. Know, I'm curious, Wendy, about all those, those election night protests. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think, do you think that they've affected Trump? And I, and I also think that, you know, you look back a year ago and I'm like, is this going to end? Mm -hmm. But it has. Mm -hmm. It has. Mm -hmm. What do you make of everything that we've seen with the protests? Well, I think the election night protests have actually transformed into a new wave. If we look at the outcome of the elections from yesterday, we see what was a referendum against the Trump administration. They did a poll two to one and in Virginia and three to one in New Jersey that said the reason why they voted the way they did was because they wanted to show Trump a clear signal that they mm -hmm. did not like his policies. Mm -hmm. Also, 78 percent of people voted uh, on health care and they were saying we want to make sure that our health care stays. So again, we see this sort of wave, this tidal wave in this referendum against what he has done. So even though there's not a protest in the street, we see them now taking that protest into the ballot box. And that's what's really but yes, important. So people feel good, Gianno, and I think I do like that. Also, you know, people are going back to work, Gianno. I mean, in the past year, unemployment, yeah. we're at 4.1 percent. That's a 17-year low. That's, I think that's pretty yeah. incredible. Yeah, the economy is obviously roaring back under President Trump, and the kind of hit on uh, Wendy's point, because I, I, to be honest with you, the election results, these were areas that were kind of sort of blue already, so did we expect to win all those areas? Absolutely not. But there is one piece that I think the Democratic Party, if they do well with this, because this is one thing I noticed in Virginia, especially thinking about mm -hmm. the viral yeah. moment uh, Wendy and I had with regards to Charlottesville, yeah. a lot of African Americans came out, and there was a poll yeah. in August which yeah. showed that... I believe it was 53% of African Americans said that they changed. felt kind of threatened I'm up, or intimidated. I'm up against a so, heartbreak, guys. So I got to let you go. Yeah. Gianna, Wendy, thank you so much. Thank guys. you. Appreciate thank you. It. All right, more after.